It's just another night for Supernatural Girls. Real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girls. with my co-host Patricia Kirkman, PK, all the way from sunny Tucson, where it's in the 70s. It's in the 70s. We're so jealous. I know it. But it's going to cool down tomorrow, so it's okay. In the 50s. That, Mm -hmm. for us, we would be wearing shorts, you know? We've been freezing. We've been snow. They said high 50s. Oh, okay. Well, just turn on that heater. (laughs) (laughs) Now that you mention it, I have it on right now. Just to be able to say right. <laughs> Good for it's you. It's not easy living here with this weather like this. I bet. It's just, it's <laughs> you who cannot even get up and down your driveway, me. right? I can't. My driveway is impassable. It is solid ice. We're hoping to get it sanded sometime tomorrow, so maybe we can get out of here. I just hope nobody has a medical emergency because they would die right here. So no, they would slide right down. They, don't worry about the sand. Maybe in a toboggan? I don't know. Yeah. But they could go flying off into the woods, too. You know our driveway. You've seen yes, it. Yes, let's put it this way. It would not be safe. No. And if you sand it, you'd have to get a great big sander to make it happen. Oh, yeah. We need we need help here. Oh, we help could always we'll get some. You think we could put Kim out there on the job? We, we might. I doubt You're it. Kim. Oh, well, I don't I'm think thinking. it's going to happen. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I don't think. What it's about gonna the happen. two pups? I think the two pups would be willing to brave it. You know, they they've learned something. My two little guys, who I love with all my heart, my little Shih Tzus, they know it's like it's cold, <laughs> it's snowy. We are going to run out the front door about four feet, and we do our business, and we come right back in, and we're done. <laughs> we are done. And I've got coats for them that are like parkas. They're heavy. They're warm. They don't care. It's like, just let me back in. This is not where we want to be. So you have a little shoes okay. for them, too? You know what? Sun. I can't find the right kind of shoes. Now, listeners, if you know of any good shoes for Shih Tzus, let me know, because their paws are really wide, Mm -hmm. and their legs are really thin, so I can't find any shoes, but I do have something else. I have Musher's Secret, which is a great product, and it's kind of like Vaseline, but it doesn't make a mess all over your house. You put it on their paws, and it gives them just like a little bit of insulation so that they don't stick to anything frozen out there. So it's it's the best I can do for right now. But if you listeners know of any good booties I could try for them, just mm-hmm. you send me an email. I want to know. Yeah. I'm trying to keep them comfortable for their two minutes outside. <laughs> <laughs> well, if they have booties on, they might stay for four. They, could, they might. They might mm-hmm. indeed. Sure. Yeah. Like it could, you know, but I'm oh, very okay. cautious with them in any kind of cold yeah. weather. They're so, so cute. Anyways, They're just absolutely gorgeous. Yes, well, we have a really great show planned for tonight. Mm -hmm. We may have to take a bit of a detour because our guest has some phone trouble. Our guest is Stanley Kripter, Dr. Stanley, who we've been dying to interview for like two years. And finally, he decided to come on the show because Mm -hmm. he has a new book out, and it's called The Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder. And we want to hear from him. So, But if we don't, guess what? Here's the the book. And there's if you the want to talk about it, he best call in. <laughs> he best. And the thing is this. I've met Rolling Thunder. I've got my own stories. And you, PK, know mm-hmm. somebody who was there with him and also has stories to tell. So right. 
between the two of us, we will have stories, and also from the book that we've read. So we're going to do our best to entertain all of you tonight with Rolling Thunder and who he was as a man, as a medicine man, as a shaman, as a legend, because he truly was a legend oh, who definitely. continues to contact people through dream work, believe it or not. So we're going to get to as much of that as we can this evening. Mm -hmm. But first and foremost, what's going on in this crazy world with the numbers, PK? Well, come on. Why would you consider the world to be crazy at all? <laughs> I don't know. I well, really don't. firstly, you got to remember that this month is all about communications and creativity, right? And right. then today, on top of that, it's a two days. So everybody's overly sensitive, which can make them insensitive just as quickly. So it's just time to sit back, relax, let it be. Can't fix it? Don't worry about it. Do the best you can. Yeah, let it go, let it go, oh, let it yeah. go, right? That's yeah. the only way it's going to work. Either that or we'll get some extra information from the pups. Oh, they probably yes. know about what's happening than people do because it's crazy. <laughs> they probably do. Gosh. That's <laughs> It has been. Well, you know, you said there were going to be a lot more secrets coming out, and certainly yes. there's a lot more accusations flying back and forth on mm -hmm. harassment uh, concerns and all of that. And who knows with this Russia probe, and it goes on and on, but they don't seem to come up with anything. So I don't know. And then there's, of course, the Clinton situation that I hear is it's going to be open yes. season on they've been up to so we'll uh, we'll see I heard from my uh, guy on the inside there mm -hmm. were going to be arrests I called him the other day I said where are the arrests we're waiting so we'll see we'll see what happens with there's all that. a lot of things taking place and that's what we're talking about the creativity the communications there's a lot yes. of stuff shake rattle and roll out there and people are trying to well look at the Hollywood stars everybody's pointing fingers he said oh, she yeah. said oh my god it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a carnival where they've got the little ducks going across and you get to take a pop shot yeah it's you like Pan know, somebody opened get hit. Pandora's box and mm. it's open now so oh, yeah. yeah and well, it didn't matter what somebody said oh that wasn't what you said that's what your intent was and you're going Oh, please. Let's get real. Let's take care of the real people that are the pain in the butts. Yeah, Let the good people get on their way, take care of what needs to be happening. Exactly. Exactly. It shouldn't be a witch hunt, but it, they should be holding people accountable. But it, the whole industry has been so corrupt for so long. Yeah. So, you know, it is what it is. But anyways, but we do have a good show planned. Another yes, great we do. show. Yes, but we, we do. also have some things to talk about. We have the Astridian Healthcare, I mean, skin care, they are right. our sponsor. Please visit their website. They've got some incredible cream. I call it super cream. I think they should rename it because it is truly amazing. And so go there. They just had a big sale. They may still give you some sale pricing on their products. All their products are absolutely top of the line. So mm -hmm. take a look at that. And now also, we are offering some things. Yes. PK, you are offering numerological readings for people to take a look at their whole year to find out what's coming up. Every right. detail about your year based on your name and your birth date. Right. They get to find out what's happening, where they're going, how fast they're going to get there, or if they better put the brakes on, or what they want to avoid. There you go. That's sure. and it would be great advice. If you want that from Patricia Kirkman, then go to her website, patriciakirkman.com, and you'll be able to book a session with PK there. And then I'm offering a brand new, brand new leading edge service. And it's so cool. Mm -hmm. So I just started working with people on this. And what it's what it's about is finding out who your spirit team is learning how to work with them so it's not just guardian angel this is a team from right. the other side that will work with you and so what I can tell you is this is something I learned from my work with American Skull that when you have one entity or one guiding spirit on the other side that's very nice that's all well and good however if you have an entire team on the other mm -hmm. side that's working together for your best interest, for your highest good, for your consciousness expansion, everything happens much more quickly, and it's the way to go. So 
I am now offering sessions in this to help everybody who wants to do this find out who their team is, bring that team together, and then set the goals that they want to work with with that spirit team. Mm -hmm. So that's a whole new service I'm offering. It's Again, it's leading edge. I don't use anybody out oh. there that's doing this. I don't so. know of anyone that does it either. And you're so good at what you do. Any opportunity people have to utilize this, they need to check in with you. Well, thank you very much. It's very exciting work. It's very powerful work. So again, you can reach me on the website, supernaturalgirlswithaz.com. You will see there is connection for me there with my email, and there's the connection link for PK for her email. So you can reach both of us very easily. We'd love to work with you and love to help you in every way that we can. So, oh my goodness, I just got a message that Dr. Krippner is going to call in now. So it looks like he oh, will be joining us, which is great news. And okay. in the meantime, while we're waiting for him to do that, now, <clears throat> we also have, excuse me, some great stories on our Supernatural Girls Facebook page. Right. So make sure that you check out the Facebook page, like us, follow us, because mm -hmm. we have the top of the line with new UFO stories. Right. And they are everywhere these days. These UFO stories are coming out of the woodwork. You don't want to miss anything about it. Time travel stories mm -hmm. are also on our, on our Facebook page. So... Join our community, become a member so that you can follow us and follow what we are finding out that's going on in the world today and in the other world. So, yes. And so PK. Did, I was going to say, did you want me to take a look at Rolling Thunder by his yes, first name or whatever? You know, he's, he's got two names, the name he was born with and now his, and also his his Native American title. So, yeah, what did you find? You've been looking at this. You found some yeah. very interesting things. Well, a couple of things were very interesting. I was fortunate enough to talk to a gentleman named Miles Howe who worked with Rolling Thunder back in the 80s. So I was very fortunate to get the additional information. So his birth name was John Walter Pope. And taking a look at that and his birth name, this gentleman came into this lifetime having issues with the father figure. But he was here on, to be a part of the world at large. He's here for the masses, and that's exactly what he was. But yes. when you take a look at his name, very sensitive, not a big ego at all, and very direct when he had something to say as John Walter Pope, but very spiritual, very into all aspects of it. But when we switched over to the name Rolling Thunder, this is a man who had absolutely no ego at all. No he was here to communicate, be creative, outgoing, very into all aspects of what had to be taken care of without falter. But when it came to making changes or communicating or what he offered to the world at large, it was always about creativity, communications, and making it a higher level. So I thought that was very interesting to take a look at how he dealt with things. Yes, and it's so interesting that when he took on the name of Rolling Thunder, how it kind of erased his ego. It did. And so it even accentuated his desire to help others in the world and the earth. That was his big mission. Mm -hmm. And it made it so much easier for him uh, creatively. There was always something more to deal with. Now, when I mentioned that I have a talk to uh, Miles Howe this morning, he said that uh, he had a great sense of humor. He said he used to smoke a uh, pipe all the time. He said that the tobacco he used was called Seven Brothers. But he said he had a good sense of humor. He said they were telling him he was smoking too much. So he said he was going to smoke five brothers instead. That way two could be dead and <laughs> have less, less to deal with. But he, he was giving some tidbits about things that he did, which I found fascinating. Where anytime it rained, he collected the uh, water because he used it for making medicines and or plants to deal with that for himself. He also was, uh, excuse me, he had retired from the railroad and I didn't have any idea that he had been part of the railroad. Yes, but he was, that's right. Background was from Oklahoma and the, his, all of his ceremonies and sunrise ceremonies were done daily regardless of what the weather was. Amazing. That was important for him. 
Yeah, but he had a commune. They were they basically lived in a commune style, uh, where all Indians were invited. Even if you were just a smidgen Indian, you were still invited as part of the group. But they would grow their own food with their own settings. And he said they also had goats where they could make cheese and milks and whatever. So they were all self-sufficient within the commune. And the property, I think we'll find out as we talk later, was purchased for him by uh, one of his musician groups. Yes, it was Mickey Hart, wasn't it, from The Grateful uh Dead? Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I guess he hobnobbed with uh, some of these celebrities and musicians. Oh, yes. We're going to find out all about this from yes. Dr. Krippner, who I think is now in the room with us. So I'm going to introduce Dr. Krippner and let you know a little bit about him because, as I mentioned earlier, Dr. Krippner, to us, he's like God. He's mm-hmm. just somebody we've wanted to talk to and interview for so long. He's an expert in the paranormal, in dreams, one of our favorite things. And he is also a professor of psychology mm-hmm. at Saybrook University, and he's the past president of the Association for Humanistic Psychology. He's an amazing man. He's written many books, co-authored many books, again, lots of them on dreams and the paranormal. So we are very honored to have Dr. Krippner with us on the show tonight. And everybody, if you have questions, just send them in to the chat room, irnchat.com, irnchat.com. And Dr. Krippner, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, and thank you for that (laughs) excellent introduction of our friend Rolling Thunder. (laughs) Well, you are so welcome. We're so pleased that you made it, and you're here with us tonight. I know you've had a very busy and hectic schedule lately, so we're very happy to have you here. Well, thank you so much. I didn't want to miss a chance to share stories about Rolling Thunder and tell your listeners why his message is still very important today. Now you know you've not, you knew him when he was alive for many years, right? I actually knew him more than twenty years, right up to the time of his death, and I had the great fortune of being at his very last birthday party, which was held in Santa Cruz, California. Mm. And those of your listeners who have read our books about Rolling Thunder, Mm -hmm. the voice of Rolling Thunder and the shamanic powers of Rolling Thunder, know that when he had his birthday party in Santa Cruz, California, we had venison meat, we had succotash, we had uh, Indian apples, we had many, many traditional Indian foods, and then a few days later, he simply packed up and left. He said, I've got to get out of here. Something bad is going to happen. And he Uh went back to Nevada, and wouldn't you know it, the very next day was the Loma Crater earthquake. (gasps) Oh, my. Right in the area where he had been staying in Santa Cruz. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Oh, my God. Well, he was somebody who was so tuned in to the Mm -hmm. earth, to the animals, and to people, right? I mean, he knew how to read people, too. But it's amazing. He knew that something bad was coming, and it was that earthquake. Oh, my gosh. Amazing. You're right. That's a good word to use. He said he was tuned in. He didn't claim that he was a prophet or could see into the future. He said it's just a matter of tuning in and talking to the animals, listening to the birds, getting a feel for the earth and the water and the wind, and they know what's going to happen before we do in, as That's humans. True. That's yeah, true. And so too. being tuned into nature helps you to uh, forecast. Well, he was an incredible legend. As, as you mentioned, his, legend, his legendary presence still is felt by many people in dreams and in other states of consciousness. Mm -hmm. But certainly, he was remarkable in what he was able to do. Let's start with his name, Rolling Thunder. He was able to call forth thunder and lightning and rainstorms, right? Well, he certainly had that reputation. And in our book... The Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder, we tell the story of Larry Dossie, who's a very well-known physician, 
And he was with Rolling Thunder in Dallas, Texas, and a newspaper reporter came to hear Rolling Thunder's talk, and he wrote a very, very um, snide and nasty article about Rolling Thunder. And oh, boy. Mm -hmm. That was Rolling Thunder phoned him at the office, and he said, I guess that you don't believe in the Native American ways, and the newspaper reporter said, oh, I just don't believe in nonsense and superstition. Oh, and Rolling oh, Thunder said, just alert your newspaper to something that's going to happen in the next 24 hours. And as soon as Rolling Thunder left town, there was raining, thunder, lightning, and there was a summer storm that never occurs in Dallas, Texas at that time of year. And so Rolling Thunder was right, but do you think the newspaper reporter uh, wrote an article about it in the newspaper? No, he didn't. Oh, that stinker. That's no fair. No, it's not there fair, but... but uh, Larry Dossi and others recorded it, and so it's now a matter of history. Exactly, Amazing. exactly. And that's one of the things he was known for. I remember when he came to Hartford, Connecticut mm -hmm. many years ago, and there were thunderstorms for three days before he got there, and for three days after he left. And, again, that's what I was told. He said, you can expect this, and sure enough, mm -hmm. That's what he brought before he even got there. That's what was <laughs> happening. It's like we were getting ready from the na and nature was yeah. responding to his his power and his energy. And he was a very commanding presence. I'll never forget meeting him. He was just power personified. But as PK mentioned, no ego, just mm -mm. very powerful. Yes, indeed, and he knew how to control his power and to use it for positive things like healing people mm -hmm. and making crops grow because when you have that amount of power it's very eager it's very easy to let your ego get the best of you and to mm -hmm. show off but rolling thunder never showed off he just used the power for very positive things that's wonderful yes he, he oh, was fortunate. amazing Mm -hmm. Just amazing. The other thing that I recall when I met him that time and he was lecturing there in, in Hartford, somebody brought me over to the window. Now, we were high up in, in one of the high-rise buildings where he was about to speak. But the, they said, look outside. And I looked outside, and there were coyotes on the sidewalk in Hartford, Connecticut. Oh. <laughs> really? As, oh. Yes. And I was like, Oh, my God. And and I know that was one of the animals that he was very close to. And as you talk about in the book, he was able to communicate very easily with them. And I didn't know any of this you know, when I met him, but I was amazed when I saw those coyotes walking down the sidewalk um, right outside the building where he was. Just Oh, incredible. I bet you were. In the voice <laughs> yes. of Rolling Thunder, I tell the story about how when I visited Rolling Thunder one night, he took me off to the very edge of the woods where his property ends and where the woods begins, and he started to hoot, hoo, 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 <laughs> and he started to bark, quack, 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 and I was not surprised at anything that he would do, but what he was actually up to was to call the coyotes, mm -hmm. and out of the woods came a pack of coyotes, and they came very close to us, so close I could have reached out and touched them. Wow. And then the leader of the pack started a conversation with Rolling Thunder. <laughs> and they spoke, barked, and yelped back and forth with each other for, oh, I would say four or five minutes. And then the oh coyote went back into the woods, and I said, Rolling Thunder, what was that all about? He said, well, it was renewing our contract. We have promised that we will not kill any of the coyote, and in exchange, they say they will not raid our chicken coop and kill any of our chickens. And we're the only farm around here that the coyotes leave alone, and we've never had a chicken lost to the coyotes. I'll be done. Incredible. Just incredible. Again, that's an amazing ability that he had. We say it's amazing, mm -hmm. but to him, this was just the natural way of being. It was a norm, yeah. 
it's just phenomenal Incredible. when you think about the things that he was able to achieve. Yes, yes. It, it was amazing, and he certainly missed. Um, <laughs> there aren't – what – now, this is – I'm going to take this off for a second, Dr. Kribner, because – I knew uh, I was lucky, blessed enough to be introduced to a number of medicine people. Ocean of Fast Wolf, and also who is in your book, who, who gave a wonderful testament to Rolling Thunder, mm -hmm. uh, Slow Turtle, uh, Philip Deere, Mad Bear Anderson. These people, just again, they, they walked their talk, they were powerful people, and they were here to help us. But since their passing, I have yet to meet anybody who can even come close to what they were able to do and how they walked on this planet. So I don't know, maybe I haven't met the right people yet, but what do you think about that? Well, you know, you talk about the celebrated people who he met. Buckminster Fuller, the inventor of the geodesic dome, and famous author and philosopher and architect, Actually, this is a Rolling Thunder's camp because he wanted to see the domes that had been erected, and he was really very pleased that they had taken his model, and they had built the domes out of a type of plastic called mylar plastic because an artist by the name of Christoph had a commission to do a ribbon of mylar plastic across Sonoma County in California. And it was so beautiful, they had to have guards standing every few yards to keep people from stealing the plastic. It was sort of silver. Old plastic. Mm. It was very exquisite. Well, when they finally finished the art show after several months, Christoph gave Rolling Thunder a lot of that mylar plastic, and that's what he used to construct the domes on his property in Nevada. Oh. Pretty darned. incredible. What a wonderful gift from Mr. Fuller. Mm. That's incredible. Okay. Well, And those domes kept the heat out in the summer and kept the heat in in the wintertime. It was just what they needed for a comfortable living place. Amazing. And and that's what he set out to do, was create a new community that, that would be self-sustaining. And he was successful with mm -hmm. that. He had a lot of support, uh, people around him that, that did support his idea and, and came to help. I mean, I know when I met him, he had a troop with him. There were a lot of people with him that, had tra that actually traveled with him. So, anyways, it's just been remarkable. Now, I have a question for you, Dr. Krippner, from the chat room from Patrice who's asking, who or what did Rolling Thunder credit his powers to? Oh, absolutely. And he never made that big of an issue of it, and he never tried to um, persuade people to come, but he had uh, actors like Candace Bergen and Jane Fonda come mm -hmm. to with their film crews and so that they could film the uh, beautiful domes. The name of the community was Bethatati, which means go in peace. And he was devoting it to peaceful ways of living, and he taught people how to arbitrate disagreements. They never had any long fights or rivalries at the camp, and he had people there literally from all over the world. Sometimes there were 50 people there, sometimes there were 100 people there, Sometimes they stayed for a few days, sometimes they stayed for a few years, but they all got something out of the experience, and to this day, they tell me about what they learned at Metatanti and how that has been so helpful in providing balance to their life. That's amazing. amazing. Again, his reach continues even to this day. Well, we're going to take a very short commercial break, everybody, and we're going to come back, and I'm going to follow up on Patrice's question because I have an additional question to Patrice's that we're going to find out a little bit more about Rolling Thunder's lineage and where he got these abilities, these amazing abilities mm -hmm. that he used so judiciously. So anyways, everybody, you are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. We'll be right back. 
Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I am here with my co-host, PK, and we are here with our illustrious guest tonight. And his name is Dr. Stanley Krippner. He's the author and co-author of this new book, Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder. And we are talking about this man right. who is truly a legend, truly a legend. And now we had a question, Dr. Krippner, uh, right before the break from mm -hmm. Patrice about who or what did Rolling Thunder credit with his powers? Where did his powers come from? Did, is that something he felt came from his lineage, from his father, grandfather, mother, grandmother? Did it come from something in his own line? Well, he did have some noted healers in his ancestry, but to tell you the truth, he really worked very hard on developing his powers himself. For example, he was not 100% Cherokee because he had some Caucasian ancestry, but he was more uh, Cherokee than anything else, and he um, actually studied the whole Cherokee way of healing but he also studied a number of other medicine traditions, and he said that he could go back and forth with six different Native American medical systems, and each of them came from different parts of the country, so each of them had their own special type of, of uh, herbs. And... One time I visited his, uh, his trailer that he had been given, and in the trailer, all of the herbs were put in boxes or little cloth sacks, and they were identified, and he knew which every one of those herbs could be used for, and those herbs came from different, uh, different traditions. Uh, he had a lot of Shoshone connections, and there was a great deal of Shoshone herbs. He also had Apache connections. So he mm. had a command of a lot of different uh, um, medicine systems. But also, he had Chinese doctor friends who had left him Chinese herbs and told him how to use the Chinese herbs. And then he had Western medical friends, and they gave him some pharmaceutical samples of Western medicine and told him how he could use those. And he once told me, you know, I don't care what the herb is, what the medicine is, as long as it helps people, I'm happy to use it. Wonderful. So he was very well versed in many different traditions. Now there's a story in the book that's quite remarkable about a young boy that was brought in with a very deep wound mm -hmm. and he was able to heal it like in a matter of what minutes? I mean it's just an incredible story. Can you tell us well, more you about know, that? Yeah, that was quite a story and that was witnessed by several people so you can't say that it was made up. Actually the full story is that when Rolling Thunder gave a lecture for the Edgar Casey people at Virginia Beach, Virginia, they wanted to bring in two young boys who were not able to go to school. They were so sick. And so Rolling Thunder had a friend of mine go and get some uh, beefsteak. And he was going to use two pieces of beefsteak in the healing. So the night came for the healing and he had both of the boys on cots, and he went to the first boy, and he put the beefsteak underneath the cot, and then he took out his eagle feathers, and he started to poke on the boy, and sort of to give the boy some energy, and the boy was uh, saying, I already feel better, and then that beefsteak underneath the cot began to smoke. And the smoke 
covered the boy, and the smoke actually took the form of a wolf. And oh, all the God. people have never seen anything like that before. Oh. And you know, the smoke went down, and the boy felt better, and the next week the boy was back in school for the first time in years. Oh, but then Rolling sense. Thunder came to the second boy, and the smoke started to come up, and then it just sort of um, petered out. And the and Rolling Thunder said, you know, that boy's mother will not let me heal her son. Oh, She's my God. goes back to school. She'll be all alone. She <gasps> won't have any company. And as long as he's sick, she's in control of him. And she'll have somebody at home to talk to, and she won't feel alone. Well, can you imagine a mother who would be so selfish as to not let her son be healed, but Rolling Thunder mm-hmm. said her energy is just too strong, and she's keeping the son from being healed. So people had a chance to see two different varieties of mother love. One was a giving wow. type of love, and one was a taking type of love. Mm-hmm. And the giving love helped the boy get cured, and the taking love helped the boy as an invalid. Isn't that that so is an sad. amazing story. God. Isn't that sad? And But mm-hmm. also, again, it, it says a lot about Rolling Thunder, who was able to discern this. Right. Yeah, I mean, good. he was able to figure this out mm-hmm. immediately. And then... There was another story in the book about this little boy that had this, I guess, very serious, deep, into the muscle wound that, Mm -hmm. again, the mist came back. Can you tell us about that? Because the mist showed up again, the smoke, and he used his eagle feather. Oh, good heavens, yes. Um, The... You've got to give me a clue because I'm trying oh, to remember yes. which this story that was. This is the one was. where he, he used the eagle feather and he kept waving it over this very deep wound. Mm-hmm. This amazed me in the book. Oh, yes, me? yes. And then you he know, kept waving it over and it just kept, it, it just like healed before everybody's eyes until it was just pink, healthy skin left over this wound. Yes, indeed. Rolling Thunder was very close to eagles, and he felt that eagle feathers had a great deal of healing property in them. And sure enough, the, he used that eagle feather and passed it over the boy's wound. He had been injured in some sort of a sports event, and right before everybody's eyes, the wound healed up. That's just hmm. incredible. And it happened just in a very short period of time. That's unheard of. Just Rolling Thunder now. believed he was a shape shifter, that he could turn himself into different shapes. Oh. And one of his favorite shapes was the eagle. And he uh-huh. said that he could turn himself into an eagle and fly around the skies. And he would stop and he would ask other eagles what was going on down below. And he could cover a lot of distance that way. And that's sort of how he got his news about the uh, condition that the Earth was in. Incredible. You know, you must be psychic, Dr. Krippner, because that was the next question, <laughs> next question I was going to ask you. From, from the chat room, it was from Katniss. It was just about what you, you answered about his shape-shifting abilities. So that's an incredible coincidence, I would say. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, Rolling Thunder also had a bit, pretty good sense of humor, as you said. Mm-hmm. And you talked about Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead, and Mickey Hart and the Grateful Dead are still playing under the name Dead and Company. And one day I got a phone call from Mickey Hart saying that he'd seen Rolling Thunder collecting herbs on his hill outside his ranch, and he was going to prepare a dinner for him. So my wife and I went up for dinner, but Rolling Thunder didn't show up. And I said to Mickey, you know, let me just phone Rolling Thunder's ranch and and see if he is there. And we phoned his ranch, and sure enough, Rolling Thunder came to the phone, and then Mickey 
sort of spoiled my surprise. He said, Rolling Thunder, how could you be at the ranch? I saw you picking herbs this morning. You see, I had intended to ask Rolling Thunder, what were you doing at 10 o'clock this morning? <laughs> then if he would have said, well, I was collecting herbs on Mickey's ranch, that would have been a pretty good demonstration that he turned himself into an eagle. But Mickey was so excited that he just uh, uh, blew the story. So what was Rolling Thunder to say? He said, well, you know, I have somebody here I'm doctoring, and he needed some special herbs, and I knew that you had those herbs on your ranch. So I just shapeshifted myself into an eagle. I went and I picked up the herbs. I brought them back, and the guy that I'm doctoring is doing fine now. Amazing. So now you got to tell everybody the the distance involved. Right. Where were you guys as opposed to where this ranch is in Nevada? How many hundreds of miles away was that? Oh, yes, his ranch is uh, moved to Sebastopol, actually, um, because I've actually been at three different ranches of his, and they keep getting bigger and bigger as he... Uh, now he has a ranch that actually has horses on it, and so he can go horseback riding. Too bad that Rolling Thunder didn't live to see that ranch. Mm -hmm. But uh, Mickey is out touring with the musicians so often that he doesn't get much of a chance to spend on his ranch, even though it's a very, very, very beautiful place. But Rolling Thunder actually is... Uh, connected to me through Mickey Hart because I met Mickey Hart at a party and Mickey Hart wanted to um, introduce me to Rolling Thunder and so one time when I was available he flew Rolling Thunder from Nevada in a private plane and the Grateful Dead were performing in San Francisco and at the intermission, who should I see walking down the aisle but this very strong and powerful Native American guy with a beautiful girl on each arm? <laughs> and so I he came up girls. to him and I said, you must be rolling thunder. And he said, yes, you must be Dr. Krippner. <laughs> so that is how we met. Oh, well, you bring up an, another very interesting chapter in the book from mm -hmm. Ocean of Fast Wolves. That he liked the ladies, yes. and that's the name he of the did. chapter. So he uh, he did have a fine eye for ladies, did he not? Oh, yes. People have to read the book to read that chapter. <laughs> and yeah. Rolling Thunder, um, unlike what you hear today, Rolling Thunder never took advantage of women. Rolling Thunder never was gross or crass or pushy uh, with women. He always treated them with great respect, and I think that's why they liked him in return. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, all Rolling Thunder was very devoted to his wife's uh, Spotted Fawn, and Spotted Fawn was an excellent cook, and at Metatonti, the spiritual community that they had together, um, she was in charge of the kitchen and she knew how to make the most delicious Indian dishes and passed on that skill to the people who stayed there. Mm -hmm. And then when Rolling Thunder called me one day and said that his wife, Spotted Fawn, was very, very sick, I came to... Uh, help her out by hypnotizing her to reduce the pain and mm -hmm. Rolling Thunder had paid a lot of money to have healers literally from all over the country come and help her out and of course I didn't charge anything I just thought that I could be of service and Rolling Thunder later told me that I'd been more helpful than any of the healers that he'd paid thousands of dollars to come and I was just doing it out of the goodness of my heart because Spotted Fun was such a beautiful, uh, beautiful woman. And when she passed, um, Rolling Thunder went into a great depression 
And then his spiritual community really didn't last much longer than that. And so for 10 years, Metatanti was doing very, very well as long as Spotted Fawn was alive. I always felt that she was the heart of Metatanti. Mm. So it and sounds like, yes. Was spending a lot of time lecturing, doing workshops, and all the money he earned came for the up upkeep of Metatanti so that he could have it like a model community. So in our book, we re have many, many stories about Metatanti, and of course, um, maybe someday somebody will have the money and the time and the land to do something similar in terms of teaching people Native American wisdom, Native American herbs, Native American medicine, all the things right. that Rolling Thunder tried to teach. That would be a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. a wonderful gift if that happened. But, and, you know, what you're talking about is interesting, too, because being a medicine man does not mean that you don't have tragedy in your life. He certainly did have tragedy in his life when he lost his first wife and child in a fire and then his second wife, uh, who was so beloved. So there, again, there's just, uh, it doesn't mean because you're a shaman or you're a medicine person that you don't right. have things happen like that in your life. There's yeah. still challenges to face. And that last one with his wife who passed, um, it did bring him to his knees, that's for sure, right. and it did affect the community greatly in not a good way. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes, you're, you're ab absolutely right. And while he was on the sacred land, Metatanti, in Nevada, uh, he had bought the land, and he got it cheap because there was no water on the land. And so he determined that he was going to find a spring of water, and he took his dowsing sticks, and he went around the land, and when the dowsing sticks went down, he had his people dig, and sure enough, they found a spring of water, even though there was not supposed to wow. be any water there. Wow. And then, a few months later, he went to the other end of the property and took the dowsing sticks again, and where the dowsing sticks went down, they found another spring of water. So he had water on both ends of his property, and both of those had been on his very, very first try. I was actually out of the land, and if he would have tried to dig five or six or seven holes, I would have seen them. No, he knew right where the water was on the very first try, and he found enough spring water to keep his whole community uh, from getting thirsty and also that could be used for cooking and for washing. That's fabulous. That's amazing. Yeah, right out in the desert like that to be able to find water. And again, you know, it's something, I'm going to go back, PK, to what you said about he had no ego. Right. And and so he had he must have had that direct connection to source mm -hmm. to be able to do these things, right, Dr. Krippner? Well, he, he was not a name dropper. You had to find out from other people. Um some of his visitors, Bob Dylan visited Rolling Thunder because right. Bob Dylan liked the early sunrise services that Rolling Thunder did early in the morning. Mm -hmm. And Rolling Thunder never made a big deal out of that, even though Bob Dylan once had a touring show called the Rolling Thunder Review. And <laughs> Rolling Thunder was always invited to come to those shows and sit on the stage and one time he was in Manhattan, and the driver was driving too fast, and the police arrested them, and he said, why are you going so fast? And Rolling Thunder said, well, we have guest passes for Bob Dylan's show. <laughs> and so the police officers <laughs> leave him, yeah. Rolling Thunder told the guest passes, and the ruling, and then the police officers. Okay, I can believe you. Better get going. You don't want to be late. <laughs> so off they went. Oh, that's so funny. Goodness me. Now here's a question. Also, this is this is from Katie. 
Dr. Krippner. And Katie's asking, did doctors ever study him, his brain, to see if he had any unusual activity in areas that are not common for most people? Well, there were always unusual activities, but living at Metatonti, his spiritual community, was really um, more like daily, ordinary living and learning from the animals, learning from the weather, learning from Rolling Thunder, who would give talks. And he was not one to... um, show off, like pointing up to the sky and bringing down a bolt of lightning. When these (laughs) things happened, they just happened in the ordinary context of happening. And I always tried to get Rolling Thunder to write his own book. And, you know, he was just so modest. He said, well, it would sound like I'm bragging and boasting. And I still wish he would have written his own book or had somebody write it for him. But the next best thing that we could do was to work with his grandson, Sidian Morningstar, and that's why we have now two books on mm-hmm. Rolling Thunder, The Voice of Rolling Thunder and then The Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder. And The Voice of Rolling Thunder resulted from tape-recorded lectures that Mickey Hart had done over the years. Mickey mm-hmm. had a dozen lectures, and we were able to take those lectures and transcribe them and use Rolling Thunder's exact words in the book. So that was a great gift for Mickey Hart, and it was very far-sighted of him to have a sound engineer with some pretty good sound equipment mm-hmm. on hand to take a recording of Rolling Thunder's lectures. How wise, how very wise. Yes, now, his sons, were they not involved with the uh, work the way that Rolling Thunder did it? No, well, I didn't hear that question. You have to repeat. Did his sons have any idea or work with Rolling Thunder at, in the same capacity as Rolling Thunder? Did they oh, have any of the talents? His grandson only met Rolling Thunder once or twice. He right. was just young. Uh, Rolling Thunder actually has a couple of sons, Mm -hmm. um, and Buffalo Horse is the one that we quote extensively in the book, and I've spent a lot of time with uh, Buffalo Horse. He doesn't feel called to be a healer, and so he has taken another path. And Mm -hmm. so people who have studied with Rolling Thunder extensively usually are not members of his immediate family. Uh, Kenneth Cohen is actually a Taoist practitioner, and he has been to visit Rolling Thunder many times. Taoism, of course, is a very ancient Chinese form of healing. And Kenneth Cohen has written some beautiful material about Rolling Thunder and what he learned. And Rolling Thunder said that Chinese Taoism comes closer than any other tradition to what the Native Americans believed in practice. Oh, no kidding. Well, we're Amazing. going to have to take another very short commercial break, everybody. So please stay tuned, and we will be coming right back. This is Supernatural Girls Radio. So stay tuned, everybody. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I'm here with my lovely co-host, PK, and our guest. We're so pleased to have him with us tonight. We have Dr. Stanley Krippner, and he has written a book with his co-author, and the book is called The Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder, a true legend, a true legend. Now, we were talking, yes, great, you guys got to get it. It's on Amazon.com with all the other books Mm -hmm. that have been authored and co-authored by Dr. Krippner, and they're all great. So, uh, Dr. Krippner, off the air... PK and I were talking to you, and you mentioned the connection with the Pleiades. So can we talk about that a little bit? Yes, Rolling Thunder often wore a turban, and the turban had seven stars on it, and they were arranged in the form of the Pleiades, the seven sisters that 
you can see up in the heavens. And Rolling Thunder felt that some of the wisdom that he got was sent from spirits who home bases in the in the uh, Pleiades. And so the Pleiades were a very, very special constellation for him. And this is something that uh, pops up in another number of folk traditions as well. And so there's something very special about the Pleiades, and they are all clustered very, very closely together, even though in actuality, of course, they're probably millions of miles apart. But Rolling Thunder didn't wear flashy clothes. He would sometimes dress up with a tan buckskin jacket for special occasions. But around the house, he would wear blue jeans or he'd wear uh, simple clothes, uh, usually earth colors like browns and, and, and light greens. And many people wonder why he didn't wear more Cherokee red, because Cherokee red is a very famous color associated with Cherokees. And he said that would just be too flashy. I knew Cherokee red very well because I grew up in Wisconsin, and I met Frank Lloyd Wright, the famous architect, a number of times. And... He was also very, very close to Native Americans, and in his buildings, he would put a logo someplace in the building, which was a square in Cherokee red, and then FLW etched into that square. And so if you look at Frank Lloyd Wright buildings, you will find that Cherokee red square sort of demonstrating his respect and sympathy and union with the Native American people and Native American wisdom. Interesting. You never know when things are going to pop up and when these connections are going to be made. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now, with the Pleiades connection, did Rolling Thunder ever talk about the people from the stars, ever having any contact with them? Well, Rolling Thunder would really enjoy sitting down around a campfire telling stories or sitting down in his home telling stories. And many of the stories were pretty fantastic in nature, like the stories about the Pleiades and about uh, how the wisdom came down from the Pleiades. But he'd also talk about his past incarnations because he felt that he had had several lives and he felt that he uh, knew Cochise, he knew Geronimo, he knew a number of Native American leaders, and sometimes he fought for them, and sometimes he was a messenger for them. And you don't know what to make of all of this, but he certainly knew how to entertain his audience. And, <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> yes, yes, that's right. I know yeah. he, one time he, when I was sitting there listening to him, he was making fun of vegetarians. <laughs> and oh, yeah. he, was, he loved to do that. And it was funny because he was talking about how the vegetarians uh, that would come to Metate uh, did not want to eat meat. And he said, that's fine because it gets real cold out here. In order to stay warm, we eat meat, but if you don't want to eat meat, that's okay with us. That's more meat for us, and we'll stay warm, but you won't. <laughs> so <laughs> he made it clear how he felt about that. <laughs> yeah. Well, he uh, was a very good storyteller, and one time I was with him in Germany. He actually was able to take a couple of trips abroad, and he was very, very popular with the Germans. And he once had a lecture in uh, the city of Bonn, Germany. And he filled up a whole auditorium. People came from hundreds of kilometers just to hear him give an evening lecture. And then some of them stayed 
he did a three-day workshop in which he would talk about Native American herbs and tell more Native American stories. And I think that uh, I think that he regretted that he didn't spend more time learning about herbs and traditions in other countries. He was very fond of Swedish folklore and Swedish herbs, by the way. Mm. And he also had many people from Scandinavia and from Germany come to visit him. Many people from England came to visit him at Metatante. And, and occasionally he would have people from Latin America. And every once in a while, somebody from Asia, uh, he would have a, he had a, he enjoyed having martial artists from China and Japan, for example demonstrate the martial arts. And one of his visitors was due to my intercession, Corinne Calvet, who was a French actress mm -hmm. who later made many, many films in Hollywood, had a severe gastrointestinal problem and he and 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 she could not find a Hollywood doctor who could help her out. And so I actually took her to visit Rolling Thunder, and he said, this is very, very serious, and I don't know if I should do it or not. And then Spotted Fawn, his wife, said, well, don't you recognize who you're talking to? This is Corrine Calvé. We saw one of, his movie, one of her movies on television last night. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean anything to him. <laughs> so he agreed to do a healing. And he says, well, we're going to have to have all of your friends come and do the snake dance. So we lit a bonfire, and we do two things. We did this very complicated snake dance to pull the energy together. But before the snake dance, we did a sweat lodge. And that meant taking off our clothes and going into the hide-covered lodge and Rolling Thunder would take hot stones, put them in the middle, and then pour water over it, and within seconds, the whole lodge was filled with steam. And we had to breathe in the steam and purify ourselves. It was very, very hot, and after like 20 minutes, then we could come out and uh, take a hose and cool down, but then we had to go back in again. And we did this three times, did the snake dance, and then we uh, had Korean Calve right in the middle of the campfire, uh, the campfire in back of her, of course, not on top of her. And then Rolling Thunder did his number with the eagle feathers, and he would poke the eagle feathers on parts of the skin that he felt needed release. And she went to bed, and she came out of bed, and she had felt well, and she never had an ailment again since. And Amazing. that was a pretty good demonstration of her uh, recuperation. That is incredible. Again, and, and as you had said, PK, that uh, he didn't think of himself as a shaman. He thought no. of himself as a healer. Healer. Mm -hmm. Amazing. That is. And... What a, but, Go ahead. No, I was just going to say what a fantastic individual he was. It's a shame that he, it's not in this point in time because there's so much that we could have learned from him. Oh, yes, indeed. And well, that brings up another another question, Dr. Krippner. And this is someone uh, asked this actually in the chat room. Uh, Conti was saying, is there anybody that's going to pick that was able to pick up the torch mm -hmm. and, and go on where he left off? The stones, of course, in the sweat lodge were too hot to pick up, and we just kept pouring water on them because they were uh, a, a source of the steam that was so necessary. I've actually been in many, many sweat lodges since that. That was my first one, and I have a friend in Phoenix, Arizona, Michael Niels, who actually lived with Rolling Thunder for a while, and who has mastered the sweat lodge, 
And he has actually written stories in the book that you referred to, The Shamanic Powers of Rolling Thunder, mm-hmm. because Thunder was very unhappy that there were Native American skeletons in the university museum in the basement. Nothing was being done with them. They'd served their purpose. The anthropologists had learned everything they needed to learn from them, and they were very unceremoniously put in boxes. And so Rolling Thunder said that uh, they deserved a proper burial. So this was one of the memorable ceremonies that I recall because Michael got permission from the university to take the boxes of the bones out of the university, and Rolling Thunder found a sacred place in Sonoma County, and so the bones were were buried with a great deal of uh, respect and Rolling Thunder's prayers and um, some very, very simple decorations like leaves and feathers were put over the... Uh, land, and then, of course, the uh, bones later just degenerated and joined the land, which was the respectful way for them to go through the cycle, not just staying in a university basement. Right. Mm. I believe he basically started a whole reinternment movement, because I know Mm -hmm. that uh, radiated throughout the country, and there were a lot of reburials. I know we had them in Connecticut. Mm-hmm. Also, and Slow Turtle was the one who uh, made sure that those happened. So oh, that you're was a great thing right. that he did. Yes, yeah, absolutely right. He started, uh, other people, of course, helped out too. But now more and more, there is a great respect being given for the remains of Native Americans. Mm-hmm. And there's no sense in just keeping them around. You know, anthropologists have learned what they need from them, and then you just dispose of them in a very, very uh, sacred way. Exactly. Well, and, Thunder and launched he... a, a number of very innovative uh, procedures. Mm-hmm. One of them had to do with the destruction of the pine nut trees in Nevada, and Rolling Thunder said to me, well, you know, the... Poor people need pine nuts as they're a good source of protein. And at night, the ranchers are coming in and they're using bulldozers and they're digging up the pine nut trees so that they can turn this into cattle land. It's against the law, but they just pay off the local sheriffs. Mm. So Rolling Thunder had a very innovative way of dealing with that. And I was actually... um, talking with Rolling Thunder, and so I charted the whole the whole story. The first thing he did was to get a film crew to take movies at night showing the bulldozers coming in oh. and the tractors coming in and digging up the mm-hmm. trees. So Smart. that was... Yeah. And then he had his assistants take sand and pour the sand into the gas tank of the tractors and the bulldozers. <laughs> yeah, that's right. They took pictures of it. <laughs> yeah. A little vandalism. <laughs> that's right. They had taken pictures of that, which I thought was really neat. Yes, and then he had some others of his of his group fly to Washington, D.C. with the, with the, um, with the film mm-hmm. to try to get some support. And most of the politicians weren't interested in that at all, but Senator Ted Kennedy was of great interest, so was Senator Henry Jackson, and they wanted to do something about it, and the president at the time was Richard Nixon, Mm -hmm. and Nixon, with all of his faults, he was very good to Native Americans, because he had a Native Mm -hmm. American coach in school. Mm-hmm. And he issued an executive order stopping the ruination of the land back in Nevada. So that was a beautiful example of how Rolling Thunder did something through peaceful means and through mm-hmm. intelligence and through cleverness instead of using 
guns and using force to try to uh, and to try to uh, stop what was being done. Yeah. And that Good was for him. Yeah, that was Rolling Thunder's way to use your wits instead of uh, using your fists. Has, has anyone picked up the torch to follow through with the work he's done? Had anybody what? Picked up the torch to go back and continue the work that Rolling Thunder had done or started. Oh, yes, yes. There are, there are certainly a number of activists today who are doing very good work. And I'll tell you, the accumulation of a lot of their work is in the Museum of the American Indian in Washington, D.C. I've been there several times, and they have a rotating exhibit because they have, oh, they have at least 100 different tribes represented, and they are collecting artifacts from both North American and South American Indian tribes, and it's a beautiful exhibit. It's interactive. People can learn a lot about Native Americans, mm -hmm. and I think that... Uh, the, that Rolling Thunder deserves some credit for that museum because he helped raise people's consciousness about how Native Americans need to be remembered and about how their work needs to be uh, well remembered. Also, well, like, is, but um, is there anybody that's able to do what he was able to do? I mean, that's the thing that I don't hear. In this, I hear people yeah. are talking about the legacy, but I don't hear that there's another healer like him going forward. Well, you know, first of all, he was one of a kind. Secondly, I have known some outstanding healers, and one of them died recently, Fawn Journey Hawk, and she was actually living in uh, the southwest United States and had a medicine camp, and I was sending her combat veterans who were suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder because she had a special treatment for them. Mm. And again, one of my students wrote her dissertation on Fawn Journey Hawk, and so we do have a a record of what Fawn did. She did not know Rolling Thunder, but she was certainly in the Rolling Thunder tradition of using intelligence and using ceremonies. Mm -hmm. What Fawn would do with a soldier who would had trauma would be to take one of her out-of-body trips back to Vietnam, Afghanistan, Iraq, wherever the trauma had occurred, and often the trauma was connected to the soldier's killing of a child, of a family, whatever, and the soldier just did that as a course of war, but then felt guilty about it, and so she begged the spirit of the dead people to release their power over the soldier and so that he could live a normal life. And then he would vow to do something in honor of the people that he had killed. And so this was sort of a reconciliation done on the spiritual plane. And Fawn Journey Hawk had a special set of healing stones that were very, very beautiful, and they were in geometric shapes. And sometimes people would steal them from her, and she said, it doesn't matter, they'll come back, and sure enough, they came back. And I've seen some of these stones, and she gave me permission to get a set of those stones and put them in a museum in Canada, which is specializing in artifacts of this type. And... So there have been other people like Rolling Thunder, but like you mentioned, he was one of a kind. And that's mm -hmm. a, a great way of, of putting this, that he was one of a kind. But here's another question, Dr. Krippner, and again, we're going to go back to uh, aliens, ETs, whatever you want to call them. This is from Oculus, who's saying, what about space visitors? What did Rolling Thunder think of that? What did he think of what? 
aliens, space visitors, ETs, whatever you want to call them. Visitors from other planets. Did he have an opinion on that or did he have an experience on that that you could share? We only have a, about a minute left, but... <laughs> oh, good heavens. No, I would say Rolling, Mon Rolling Thunder was very broad-minded. And he felt if somebody was doing good work, uh, they had his blessing. And whether it was a male or a female, uh, native or non-native, um, he was very, very Alien great. or human. <laughs> Didn't matter. <laughs> Bring Didn't matter, as long as they were doing good work. Give his blessing to them. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. <clears throat> well, that's a, a wonderful way to be. And I think, again, his lack of ego, as PK identified that right at the beginning of the show, uh, was paramount in his ability to do the wonderful and great work that he did. And, again, his life was not without s some challenges because he was still human, and we all face those great loss at certain times oh, and, and things like that. But, but he kept his focus on helping the world, helping the earth, helping people. And it's wonderful that you've written this great book it is. that commemorates everything that he's done. Thank you so much for will... publicizing it, and thank you for all of your knowledge about Rolling Thunder. Oh, it's, it's our pleasure uh, to be with you tonight and to, again, honor his memory and hopefully inspire other people to follow some of his teachings as we move forward in this world today. I hope. Dr. Chris, thank you so much for being on the show. I know you've you've been so patient with us and waiting for your dinner date. And <laughs> <laughs> we wish and that you were are there with you welcome. so it's we could enjoy pleasure. dinner with you. <laughs> we'll be very fortunate to have you with us tonight. Okay, yes. goodbye now, or as Rolling Thunder would say, ho. <laughs> ho. <laughs> ho. Oh, okay. Thank you, Dr. Tripper. Enjoy the rest of your evening in California. Thank you so much. So now next week, PK, <laughs> we've got a first on the show. Yes, we We're do. We're following up the great Dr. Krippner and the legend of Rolling Thunder with Warren Kaler. He is a physical medium. And we're going to find out all about what a physical medium is, what they do. It's different from anyone else we've had on the show before. Mm -hmm. So this is going to be a very, very exciting time coming up. So make sure, everybody, that you're following us on Facebook. You can be informed of our next shows, our next great stories on the supernatural. Keep in touch with us. As you know, we are here to love and support you through your own life. So... You know how to reach us. You can be found at SupernaturalGirlsWithAZ.com on our website. So, until yes. next week, we'll see you on the mm -hmm. Blue Highway. <laughs> Good night. Good night. Good night. <laughs>